So, um, Island Beach is like on, is here, there it is, Island Beach. Yeah. After an early start, a car ride and a boat ride, we finally made it to Kingscote on KI. Oh, did you? After arriving on the island, our first mission was to get some food in our bellies. Egg and bacon. My sincerest apologies to the staff at this cafe who very graciously took our order for eight people. It was very delicious and we're sorry. <laughs> Because we couldn't get into our accommodation until the afternoon, we set off to explore the island. Our first stop, Seal Bay, is one that honestly can't be missed, even though the bay is populated with sea lions and not seals. The boardwalk takes you right up close to the animals as they lay in the sunshine and you can almost play a game as you try and spot them amongst the greenery. Our visit was a little bit drizzly as we were there in the off season, but if you have a warm jacket and a hoodie you'll survive the worst of it. Our next stop was Emu Ridge, an emu and a an eucalyptus oil distillery. Emu oil has been used by Indigenous Australians for thousands of years to cure all sorts of skin related ailments and it definitely works. My eczema ridden hands were very thankful that we made the stop. We then headed off to Clifford's Honey Farm, famed for their local honey ice cream. Rich, sweet, creamy, the ice cream was the perfect afternoon pick me up after an early morning. And then finally, it was time to check into our accommodation. We stayed in a place called Le Soleil. It was a tiny little cabin on stilts, but it was it it did the job uh, and fit all eight of us, which was pretty impressive. Dinner of spaghetti bolognese and a glass of wine had smiles on everyone's dials. Oh no! Oh no! The island is the perfect place to just relax, sit back, and catch up on work, apparently. <laughs> my family is full of workaholics, my apologies, but uh, after breakfast, this tends to happen. Breakfast is usually a sleepy affair with the masses wandering out of their bedrooms, grateful that coffee has been brewed and breakfast has just appeared before them. Communal breakfasts are the heart of these holidays. The second day of the trip was the wettest, but that didn't stop us exploring. A short walk away from our place was Island Beach, which was just breathtaking. And like a little bit rainy also. Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am home? Emi Bay Lavender was our first stop of the day. Because we'd gone in winter, the fields had been cut back to encourage growth for the new crop. This, and the rain, encouraged us to set up shop inside and enjoy some absolutely massive lavender scones. I think it's strawberry. 
Belly's full, we made our way over to KI Spirits Cellar Door, a distillery not too far away from the lavender farm. Here they make a variety of liqueur, gin and vodka. I tried their gin flight and decided I liked their old Tom gin the best. This unfortunately turned out to be the most expensive, but oh well. <laughs> for dinner we trekked out to the Pennyshaw Hotel, also known as The Penny, for a proper pub feed. Needless to say, after three courses we were stuffed. Yes, it could be a bit better, but... <laughs> Day three saw us make the drive out to Flinders Chase. Kangaroo Island was hit particularly hard in the summer of 2019-2020, with the western edge of the island home to Flinders Chase National Park burned and damaged as the fires raged on. You probably saw all this when Australia just generally was on fire, um, but as our trip was towards the end of 2020, you could already see life returning to the fire ravaged areas. These native bush plants are really quite adept at springing back after massive fires. <laughs> Yo! The drive from Island Beach to Flinders Chase took about an hour, so by the time we arrived, it was time for a quick car boot lunch before setting off to explore. What's going on? Oh, no. First on the list was the remarkable rocks. Taking over 500 million years to come to fruition, these rocks are covered with an orange golden lichen. They're one of the standout landmarks of the island and one of the few you can actually get up close and personal with. You can have a grand old time just wandering around the rocks, but make sure you don't fall off. <laughs> there are plenty of signs to remind you of that. Flinders Chase National Park is also home to the Admiral's Arch Rock Formation at the western edge of the island. On the walk down you're greeted by the ocean and the wind. Once you get onto the walkway closer to the cliffs, you're shielded enough to enjoy the view. A New Zealand fair seal colony has made this side of the island its home and you can spot them everywhere. They are categorically unbothered by the wind and the cold and can be seen playing in all the rock pools. Our long day was finally completed with a feast of pizza, pasta and wine and a little bit of laughter. <laughs> the last day on the island saw us visited by a pretty friendly local, but I suspect he was the one behind our spilled rubbish bin. We packed up and headed back to Kingscote to wait for our ferry at a little cafe called Millie May's Pantry. This cafe was honestly one of the cutest I've ever been to, with great food and great coffee. Oh, Our trip ended with all smiles and a clear blue day as we were ferried back to the mainland. <laughs>